Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Mohan Murli yet again with another video. But this video is going to be completely on Inventor Simulation. Okay, let's have a look at what uh, Inventor Simulation has to offer. So for this, we will be looking at a basic workflow of a stress analysis. Okay, basic stress analysis, nothing uh, uh, too complex. A very basic stress analysis is what we will be looking at. So here I have with me a support bracket. So we will be applying some loads, add some material to it and then we will look at, you know, probably the deflections and, you know, one my stresses that undergo during the load conditions. To start off with, uh, first of all, let's have a look at where do we find this particular tool or command. So we will have to come down in the ribbons, you will have to come down to the environments and there you will find stress analysis. Very, very simple. Click on that stress analysis. Now in the stress analysis, you will notice the ribbon has completely changed, obviously. Also now the first, the only two options that are available with us right now is create study and one is finish the analysis. Obviously you don't want to finish it right away. So let's go ahead and start create study. So in this, it will ask you if you want to name the type of, uh, give your study a name. So I will stick to static analysis one and let it be static analysis here. It's a, since it's a very basic uh, stress analysis that we are doing, I will not go ahead and change any of these. I will show you other videos wherein uh, we use these other options that are available. But for right now, I will just go ahead and do a basic stress and static analysis and I would say OK. So in the browser, you would notice, uh, first of all, there is our assembly name, material, constraints, loads, contacts, mesh and results. Now, and this is the, the name that we had given to this is static analysis one. So that's the default name that's there. Now, we have two ways of doing things, uh, doing a study in inventor, according to me. So one way is uh, on the ribbon, you can start from the left that's here and progress towards the right side, add all the constraints, loads, contacts, mesh, and then simulate and your analysis process is done. Very, very simple. So that is one method. The second method is using the browser to do the analysis. So first of all, assign your material, then your constraints, then your loads, then your contacts, mesh, and then finally you have your results. We can use any of the approach. It's all the same. So first of all, I will start. I will use the browser method. So right click on the material and say assign materials. Okay. So right now it is uh, mild steel. So let it be as mild steel itself. Nothing to be changed and we'd say, okay. Okay. So you can just say show all materials. So as soon as you apply all the materials, you will find the small arrow that's popping up next to the material. So once you expand that, you will notice that these are the materials that has been assigned to this particular support bracket. Very, very simple. Next constraints. There is no arrow here because there's nothing that's been assigned. So let us now go ahead and assign constraints. You can right click here, choose whatever for constraint you want to use, or you can also place it from here on the ribbon. Okay. So let's take up from the pin constraints and I will be placing them in these circular joints. Okay. Apply very, very simple. Select the, uh, select the face, circular face and say apply very, very simple. And once you're done, say, okay. So you also get these glyphs are nothing but the images that show that constraints are being applied at those particular points. So you will notice next to constraints, there are these arrow mark and four constraints are there. Similarly, let's go down to loads, loads. Now coming down to loads, we have multiple options. One is force, pressure, bearing, moment, and even gravity as well. Okay. So right now I'll just take up our very basic force, add them in these circular areas. You can also change the direction, use the small glyphs here, use vector components. And you know, you can just, since it's going down in negative Y, you can just give it as maybe 2000 Newton, 2000 is a good enough number and select all the points that you want to apply the load. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. And I would say, okay. So you will notice loads has also been applied. Now contacts, what is contacts? So this is something that is, I would say is very, very important. Okay. In an assembly uh, contacts, uh, there are multiple parts are being held together either through, you know, uh, bolted joint, bolted connections, or even welding sometimes. So contacts 
takes into consideration these welded joints or you know these bolted joints into the analysis because uh, welding also adds strength to the assembly right welding also adds strength to the assembly so you also need to consider all of that so there are two ways of doing assigning contacts one is a very automatic contacts and one is a manual one where you got to start choosing so to start off with you can just say automatic because inventor is very very intelligent to understand where contacts are there and it will automatically pick them up so you select automatic give it a couple of seconds and it will create contacts so once you notice the arrow that is there popped up expand that and you will see there are so many uh, joints here so many contacts that is there and many of them are welded so you will notice here what type of uh, of a bond it is or contact it is it's all welded here so weldings have been done in multiple points in this particular assembly and it takes into consideration all those factors as well now next main thing is mesh view so it is uh, very very flexible here the mesh tool in inventor okay by default just randomly click the mesh view and it would generate the default mesh settings okay if you are not satisfied with that mesh that has been popped up so what you can do, you can choose the mesh settings here on the top in the ribbon. Average element size, you can change any of these options. Right now, I'll leave it at default because I'm happy with what the mesh has been generated, what mesh has been generated. Okay. Now, since the mesh has also been done, all we have to do is go ahead and simulate. Okay. Very, very simple. We have added all the major factors that we need. That is the material constraints, loads and contacts. So go ahead and hit simulate. It will give you an indication that one study and one configuration will be run. Simply say run. Give it a couple of seconds and your analysis will be ready. So you will notice uh, results have been expanded here. Right now we are looking at one mice stress. We can choose our first principle stress, third principle stress, displacement and our safety factor as well. Safety factor looks very, very safe. Okay. So let us look at displacement. Now, to be honest, first of all, uh, in the real world scenario, the dis displacement is not up to this level. This is just an exaggerated level just to show us the, show us how much deflection might occur. So you can also change the uh, level of exaggeration here. So adjusted into two. So you will see it will show us more. Adjustment into 5 is quite, you know, unrealistic. Okay. But then uh, the deflections don't happen so much in the real world scenario. So if you want to have a look at the actual deflections that's happening, you can click on actual. So if you zoom in, you will notice there's a very, very little deviation. Yes. So this is like what 0.014 mm. That's the maximum deflection that is happening in this entire assembly. Okay. So now with this in mind, with this, uh, analysis with this result in front of us it makes it much much more simpler to go ahead and manufacture your component or if you need any design changes as well okay now if you have noticed something uh, prior to simulating this analysis the second half of the ribbon was grayed out those tools were not available to us okay now what we can do is we can just have a look at the other options that's there we have something called as animate wherein it will just simply show us how deflection takes place deflection or displacement very very simple you can also extract it out as a video by clicking here this button here and it will do the job for us okay now what is this probe probe is uh, nothing but it will just give you a small indication uh, say let's select probe select any particular point it will give us a displacement at that particular node or that particular point very very simple and we can just say finish yes now now the main thing uh, post all of this is to generate a report it is of no use if you just do this particular analysis and just save it somewhere in your computer so what you do is we have this option called as a report this report is very very extensive it gives us all the information that we need okay so we have multiple options of formats. So let's maybe take up as a rich text format. If you want to change any of the information, choose what has to be populated in the report, you can choose and say, okay.
so it will generate a particular report and I will also show you how the report looks like just give it a couple of seconds in the meanwhile uh, I haven't covered what first principle stresses one my stresses are I'm sure uh, everyone is aware of that so I'll not get into those details okay so yeah it's a good time for me to tell you guys that uh, please do subscribe for this channel and also raise your queries so that I'll know uh, what you guys are looking out for uh, you can reach out to me uh, on YouTube the comment box let me know your thoughts on the videos that I make and if there's anything special that you would like to look at okay so right now the video is uh, the analysis has been performed so let us look at uh, what are the how the what the contents of the report are so first of all it gives us the physical properties of the assembly so what type of an uh, analysis we have done what were the mesh settings that we have used material properties what is the load that we have applied and constraints as well so it also gives us a screenshot or image of where the constraints have been applied and where the loads have been applied at different angles okay so what type of a constraint we have used pin constraint so it gives us each uh, individual images for each of the four constraints that we have added I'll skip through all of that let us come to the contacts it is already I told you it automatically takes it up we use the automatic contact option so it takes up all of that and then finally it gives us the results was the magnitude components in each of the x y and z directions and finally the results the volume mass displacement in each of the axes and again as an image for also the all the results that we require like for example one my stresses you notice screenshots are there where the minimum stress is there where the maximum stress is there and since we had also placed a probe you will notice at that particular probe point that we placed so it gives us the reading at that particular point as well so that has also been taken into account while generating the report so yes this is what uh, the report consists of it's pretty much almost a 37 uh, page report and uh, this is going to be very very helpful for the team before going into manufacturing of the product and it's a good uh, you know step to start brainstorming before even generating the product final product and see how it is going to uh, survive in the real world scenario okay so with that I would like to end this particular video please uh, feel free to reach out to me for any uh, queries or how to uh, do any how to perform any of the commands or anything that you would guys would like to look at okay so just say finish analysis and we are done okay so if you want to get back environments stress analysis and our study would be there okay that's just a quick uh, shortcut again okay guys so thank you uh, like I said again just comment your issues and we'll, let's take it forward from there thank you guys have a great time learning in mentor professional thank you